Hello everyone, how you guys doing? Hopefully you're having a wonderful day and today we are here with a Chaos Elemental Guide for Old School RuneScape in my endless adventure to make as many Slayer and Boss Guides as possible. Hopefully you guys enjoy. If you do, make sure to leave a like. Anything you want to see from me in the future, guide-wise, let me know in a comment down below. And on top of that, if you want to support me, there are plenty of links that you can check out down below and I would appreciate it greatly. But with that said, let's get into the guide. For the requirements, there isn't anything necessarily required, these are more so recommendations, but 70 in your melees would be beneficial if you're going to use melee. Personally, I think range is better in that, I would also recommend 70 of. Again, you can come here lower, but it's going to impact your trips. And then 37 prayer is actually more so a requirement because if you don't have that, you're going to soak up a ton of damage. For the Chaos Elemental, we'll be using melee or range for our attack style. Its attack style is going to be magic base, at least that's the one we're most fearful of. And its max hit is a 28. As far as what we can expect, an elite clue is a 1 in 200 drop or a 1 in 100 drop if you have a ring of wealth imbued. Dragon Pickaxe is a 1 in 256, which isn't too bad for a pretty pricey drop. The Chaos Elemental Pet is a 1 in 300, which is really, really good, a really quick pet, and a lot of the reason why people come here. And overall, you get about 24k GP per kill, which isn't terrible, especially for a med game boss that is safe spotable. For the range gear here on the left-hand side, we have a rune crossbow setup, not anything I'd recommend, but probably the least I'd come here with. Um, for the medium setup, kind of in the middle, we have a blowpipe setup along with about 10 mil overall in gear, uh, maybe a little lower. I guess at this point after some of the market crashes, but um, the blowpipe will eventually be phased out. I'd imagine once the kind of DPS updates hit it, then you might want to go with the dragon crossbow instead if you're feeling more into that. And then the best option is going to be the crossbow that is just going to utterly destroy the chaos elemental. So I would highly recommend it if you can. You do have to charge that with revenant ether. However, it's well worth it. For the melee gear, I don't really recommend melee, but if you you want to use it if you want to bring it on the left hand side we have a Vigoris chain mace set up along with some good barrows gear and just a lot of dps filler options that don't really break the bank because you will be in the wilderness so you want to keep these setups kind of to a minimum you don't want to lose anything important and on the right hand side a lot of the same setup just mixed in a little bit of bandos and a torture which was really nice along with some other dps upgrades if you're a lower lower level that is coming here and just want to scrape by a varax armor set can and do you pretty well and a whip is a nice replacement if you don't have of course chain mace yet we're going to want to make our way to the deep wilderness the chaos elemental is typically a little bit to the southwest of the rogues castle before we get there though for the inventory you're going to want to bring a boosting potion personally i'm bringing a bastion because that ups my range and defense which is what i'm looking for in addition prayer pots as many as you feel are going to be necessary for your trip this is kind of more personal depending on how much food you use the third Third one is a teleport to house, just a teleport once I'm done with my trips to be able to go and restock. You can choose any banking teleport that you like. And fourth, I have summer pies. Pies are a really good option at Chaos Elemental because there's a special attack that can take off your armor and your weapons. And so if you have an empty inventory, it's going to be problematic. So the pies are nice because the empty pie shells stay in your inventory after you eat them. It's really nice for this boss in particular. For how to get there, the most common way will be the Wilderness Lever. You can just enter there a little bit south of Edgeville and you'll be teleported to the west in the little lava maze right there. Very small maze. Just run to the north and you'll be okay. You will need a knife or some sort of weapon that can slash through the spider web so keep that in mind if you are coming through the wilderness lever area um, the second option is the anacarl telly which will teleport you a little bit to the southeast um, for this you'll need desert treasure completed and if you're going to cast the spell and not use a tablet then you'll also need 90 magic um, once you teleport here just run a little bit to the west and where the red line is along that entire white line that's a little door you just go through there and you'll be fine and then the wilderness obelisk is the last option option here i would recommend just entering another obelisk near the Varox enclave um, there's a bunch of obelisks all over old school runescape in the wilderness and you kind of just teleport randomly throughout them once you make it through the orange one then you'll be in the right spot if you have some of the higher tier wilderness diaries done you can actually choose that however most people aren't going to be able to so it is a little bit rng based on how long it takes to get here before we get on out there, a couple notes. The first thing is you will want to keep your player attack options on hidden. That way you don't accidentally skull on anyone, whether it be a PK or someone that's trying to skull trick you at the web or 
anything in between, you don't want any of that happening. On top of that, make sure if you're a little nervous to just keep your protect item on at all times. And also if you're going to be doing the luring method, you'll want to bring a stamina potion. So getting on out there, I'm going to use an Anna Carl Telly. Um, it's okay that you can have an empty inventory spot. I actually prefer it. I'm also going to drink a nice little dose of stamina and I'm going to hop worlds because there was a PK here a second ago and he is very angry at me. Making my way on up here, you have two options of attack. The first one is you just face tank it. If you want to do that, just pray mage and range. And whenever you see that green little orb coming out at you, that means that your weapon's going to be taken off. You actually want it to take your weapon off because then it's not at least going to deal you any damage. It's better than, you know, getting hit a 20 like right there. The Chaos Elemental is not anything that's to be taken lightly. It is a pretty hard thing to kill, honestly. Um, one thing I will say is to keep your auto retaliate off like I do here so you don't get dragged in as much. Um, whenever I eat, I try to do a lot of eating at once. That way I'm not wasting hits in between. I just kind of get it all out of the way. You will have to do a bit of eating out here. Like I said, I'm high level and I'm still getting hit a little bit. So this is why the safe spot is somewhat optimal. At a high level with pretty good gear, the kills still aren't all that easy. I mean, they're pretty quick relative because the safe spot takes a while to set up, but they can become pretty difficult, especially if you're a lower med level. I did do this kill unpotted though, so there is that benefit, I guess. Um, but the timer in between kills is about a minute long, so you are going to want to hop. So find a world that you like and just move between the two. I'm going to hop to another one right now and show you guys the lure. Once you're here, throw on your mage prayer and attack the chaos elemental. Um, for the lure, I like to throw it on long range just to make sure I hit him without having to run too close. And from there, you're going to want to run all the way to the south. So whenever he's up there like that in a kind of a weird spot, I like to at least make sure he follows me down here before I go any farther. Um, he, yeah, okay, he made it. It's a little slow. Sometimes you start to second guess yourself. Typically, I'd say just wait a little bit longer than you think. But the Chaos Elemental is now following me, so I'm going to want to hug this wall down here. The one annoying thing about the safe spot is if you get teleported running up, you got to go and re-aggro him and get him back into the lure. So it is a bit annoying if that happens and you get a little unlucky. As soon as he runs into your wander space, though, and you start to see him, run to the north, just start sprinting. Um, as fast as you can. I like to spam click because I don't know back in the day whenever I'd get hit with one of those red teleports and if I was spam clicking I'd have like a higher success rate of not getting absolutely uh, screwed over so that was kind of nice. He should follow me on up and now and as he does right there you can stand over here and just start attacking him. Something about this area he basically doesn't recognize you but if you start to get close he will so that's why melee isn't great here. I wouldn't recommend it for this safe spot. There is a melee flinching spot that I can show after this. It's not very useful. I really don't enjoy it and I wouldn't recommend it, but it's kind of what people used to do back in the day and at a low and med level, it makes melee kills viable. So it is something I'll show, but this is amazing for range. Personally, I enjoy this so much. It would be really nice too if you had an alt account, you could just go to each world and lure the chaos elemental over here and then you could just tear through them. Um, but it does take a little bit of time to set up. So if if you can tank the Chaos Elliot, you'd rather do that, but if you're not feeling up to it, this is a great way of going about it as well. Easy kill right there, and now I can go back over here and show you guys the final method, the least viable, but an option. The last spot is pretty simple, it's just right behind this tree. Basically, um, whenever you get the Chaos Elemental in the right little spot, you can use it this way, you can use it the other way, however you want to go about it. This is the method called flinching, which is where it's melee based. I mean, you could do it with range, but you just want to go over there. You basically just hop out every now and then, punch the Chaos Elemental, and go back to hiding. Whenever its health bar is about to go away, you then can click on it again, go back out, and you won't get hit. If you come back too quick, like this right here, it will then hit you and you'll be susceptible to all of the things it has to offer. So you're going to want to make sure that you take your time, don't keep getting hit because it'll just mess you up even more than you need to be. But as you can imagine, this is quite a slow method of killing Chaos Elemental, so I'm not too much of a fan of it. But if you're into it, that is up to you. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this Chaos Elemental guide. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Anything you want to see from me, as I mentioned earlier, let me know in a comment down below. And on top of that, if you want to see more videos like this, as soon as I go live, make sure to subscribe. And with that said, hopefully have a wonderful day and uh, peace. So once you found your way here, you're going to want... Oh, hey there, buddy. Oh, hey there. <laughs>
Hey, how's it going? I'm just recording a guide. Jeez, man. Oh, he's calling the troops. Damn it. I'm, guys, I'm making a guide. You don't understand. I'm, guys, I'm trying to help the people. I'm bringing more people out here for you to kill later. It's fine. It all works. It all works. Yeah, this inventory isn't very good for if you're getting PK'd, but I just figured it'd be fine. Um, yeah, get out of here, scrub. Oh, jeez, I didn't mean that. And we're <laughs> see ya, Hick.